Chapter number zero of the Vocation of the Scholar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Vocation of the Scholar by Johann Gottlieb Fichte. Translated by William Smith, 1816 to 1896. Chapter zero introduction by william smith the following lectures were delivered soon after fichte's arrival at jena in 1794 to an audience composed of students from all departments of the university with the view of awakening in their minds a more adequate conception of the exalted nature of their calling and its attendant duties to this end fichte sets forth with that energy of thought and fervency of style which are his peculiar characteristics the vocation of man as an individual and as a member of society the sources of the different classes into which society is divided and the duties arising from these distinctions and lastly the vocation of that particular class whose separate calling has its origin in the common desire of man to know to know in italics and who have chosen the acquisition and imparting of knowledge as their share of the general labors of the race assigning to the duties of the scholar with a capital s as the teacher and guide of mankind teacher guide and mankind are capitalized the highest place among the varied forms of human activity and to the scholar himself in so far as he worthily fulfills these duties the most honorable place in human society the present publication may be considered as in some respects introductory to that which the translator has already offered to the english reader under the title of a valid ontology on the basis of reed's theory or rather abdication of philosophy that we now advert to this essay however easy the task the present is not the fitting opportunity for its performance indeed the ideal philosophy both words capitalized has no cause to quarrel with dr chalmers from whose essential truthful and generous nature its inherent nobleness has drawn forth a tribute which must give it new importance in a quarter where such a recognition was least of all expected before the results of the anticipated quote, collision end quote, become apparent many men will have weighed whatever is important in these matters in the silence of their own thoughts and before the tribunal of many a mind to whom scotland is even now looking for her future religious teaching her theology will be summoned to answer this question among others how it is to reconcile its asserted faith in an all-perfect god with adherence to a philosophy which reduces the ideas we possess of infinite truth beauty and goodness to mere negations of experience our purpose in averting to this subject at all is one more akin to the object of the present publication it is to record our earnest protest against the singular conclusion by which dr chalmers endeavors to restore harmony between his sympathies and his theology namely that the prevailing admiration for german philosophies is altogether irrespective of their truth he gravely settles himself down in the hypothesis that these new doctrines which have wrung from him an unwilling admiration have after all nothing serious about them are at best only feats of intellectual dexterity not possessing and indeed not demanding any sustaining basis of truth or evidence that they are akin to the novel or the drama addressed indeed to a different audience and perhaps designed to minister to the gratification of higher appetites but not essentially different from these vehicles of amusement 
for the reviewer seems to attach no higher value than this to any form of literature in parenthesis and therefore aptly enough described by the appellation of the quote, theatricals of science end quote. it would be in vain to reason against such assertions as these wholly unsupported as they are by any species of evidence such sweeping dogmatism carries with it to most minds its own antidote and in the case of any one who would seriously entertain such gratuitous assertions will scarcely be improved by refutation for moral scepticism cannot be cured by argument if there is one point more than another in which the higher philosophy and literature of germany can claim a proud superiority over that of every other nation it is this very point of its earnestness nowhere can history point to a period in which the studies that most of all dignify and adorn human life have been pursued with a more elevated devotion or guided by a loftier morality the reader who honestly seeks truth for her own sake may learn in the following discourses how these quote, theatricals of science end quote, were viewed by one of the noblest men who ever labored for the advancement of humanity as to fichte the present writer feels that no language of his could so worthily express the deep and earnest admiration which the character and doctrines of that great man must command from every sincere and upright mind as the eloquent words of mr carlyle when speaking of the critical philosophy generally in his celebrated article on the state of german literature quote, let the reader believe us the critical philosophers whatever they may be are no mystics and have no fellowship with mystics what a mystic is we have said above but kant fichte and schelling are men of cool judgment and determinate energetic character men of science and profound and universal investigation nowhere does the world in all its bearings spiritual or material theoretical or practical lie pictured in clearer or truer colors than in such heads as these we have heard kant estimated as a spiritual brother of balmy as justly might we take sir isaac newton for a spiritual brother of count swedenborg and laplace's mechanism of the heavens for a peristyle to the vision of the new jerusalem that this is no extravagant comparison we appeal to any man acquainted with any single volume of kant's writings neither though schelling's system differs still more widely from ours can we reckon schelling a mystic he is a man evidently of deep insight into individual things speaks wisely and reasons with the nicest accuracy on all matters where we understand his data fairer might it be in us to say that we had not yet appreciated his truth and therefore could not appreciate his air but above all the mysticism of fichte might astonish us the cold colossal adamantine spirit standing erect and clear like a cato major among degenerate men fit to have been the teacher of the stoa and to have discoursed of beauty and virtue in the groves of academy our reader has seen some words of fichte's are these like words of a mystic we state fichte's character as it is known and admitted by men of all parties among the germans when we say that so robust an intellect a soul so calm so lofty massive and immovable has not mingled in philosophical discussion since the time of luther we figure his motionless look had he heard this charge of mysticism for the man rises before us amid contradiction and debate like a granite mountain amid clouds and winds ridicule of the best that could be commanded has been already tried against him but it could not avail what was the wit of a thousand wits to him the cry of a thousand coughs assaulting that old cliff of granite 
seen from the summit these as they winged the midway air showed scarce so gross as beetles and their cry was seldom even audible Fichte's opinions may be true or false, but his character as a thinker can be slightly valued only by such as know it ill, and as a man approved by action and suffering in his life and in his death, he ranks with a class of men who are common only in better ages than ours. The critical philosophy has been regarded by persons of approved judgment and nowise directly implicated in the furthering of it as distinctly the greatest intellectual achievement of the century in which it came to light. August Wilhelm Schlegel has stated in plain terms his belief that in respect of its probable influence on the moral culture of Europe, it stands on a line with the Reformation. We mention Schlegel as a man whose opinion has a known value among ourselves but the worth of Kant's philosophy is not to be gathered from votes alone. The noble system of morality, the purer theology, the lofty views of man's nature derived from it, nay, perhaps, the very discussion of such matters to which it gave so strong an impetus, have told with remarkable and beneficial influence on the whole spiritual character of Germany no writer of any importance in that country be he acquainted or not with the critical philosophy but breathes a spirit of devoutness and elevation more or less directly drawn from it such men as goethe and schiller cannot exist without effect in any literature or in any century but if one circumstance more than another has contributed to forward their endeavors and introduce that higher tone into the literature of germany it has been this philosophical system to which in wisely believing its results or even in wisely denying them all that was lofty and pure in the genius of poetry or the reason of man so readily allied itself End quote. edinburgh review 1827 Edinburgh April 1847 End of chapter 0